Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 447 at scavengerlife.com. Welcome, everyone, to our podcast. Yep. Uh, I hope, I, I right now, while we do this, I really hope some people are working. I think that's going to motivate me for this podcast if I'm imagining people like in their little back bedroom and they're like, Polishing their shoes or <laughs> packing. Packing. That's a good thing to do while you listen. There's printing out labels. Yep. Doing those kind of mindless tasks where you can tasks where you can actually hear a podcast. Yes. Uh, although many people might be driving, which is where I listen to podcasts. M- many true. of my podcasts. That's very true. Um, okay. Number one. Appreciating. The progress that you actually make. Yes. I, I bring this up because uh, <laughs> a couple days ago, you know, we we spent a lot of money and time renovating this apartment on our main street in downtown. Yes. Small town America. And uh, that was like four months ago when it was done. And yeah. now it's for rent and people are renting it. But uh, you actually spent... A whole like day and evening over there. You, you had some like townspeople over where you guys were like strategizing about the town. Yeah. And then real quick, and then you stayed after everyone left, and you just hung out with your computer all by yourself. Yeah. And like just did like eBay stuff, and you were uh, working, and we were just texting back and forth because I was at home, and I feel like that was the first time you actually like kind of fully realized and appreciated the work we did well it was funny because the two there were three people that i was working with one is from out of town another organization but the two other women um run huge organizations within our county that are very important huge for our small town well i mean (laughs) they're like the economic engine of this town and county so um i was able to show them in person the apartment because anytime I've wanted to show them, there was someone renting. But this was a chunk of time in the middle of the week where I was like, oh, let's have a meeting over there. I'll make coffee. I'll bring whatever. And um, I think I really appreciated it because I had just given all three of them a tour. You know, they'd seen photos of it, but to walk in is so different. So I really felt comfortable hanging out there. And then, like you said, we have really fast internet over there. So I was like, I'm just going to hang out here for an hour or so and like do stuff on my computer. It was quiet. There were no other distractions of doing things here. It was, it was like having an office (laughs) away from your home. But you know, just getting back to, yeah, just like the kind of eBay part of it or just like your daily life. It is just is so, I think many of us don't realize how much we actually get done. You know, we're so in the day to day. Whether it be it's whatever we're doing, we don't see, yeah, like, oh, yeah, I've actually done quite yep. a bit and, yep. and made it happen. Well, I think where that comes in, that realization comes in, is sometimes when you're showing it to other people um, or explaining it to other people. So that situation was me being like, oh, here's this apartment we renovated. And they were like, Oh my God, you know, right. and, I, and I feel that way too, but I'm also like, oh yeah, this is like right. And because if you were meeting with them because you guys were trying to help because now you're on this like a town board yeah. to how to improve downtown. our small downtown yeah. and you guys were in a very concrete example of what needs yeah. to be done. Money needs to be spent to exactly. improve buildings. So no, it does feel good. I think it, it takes that outside perspective sometimes when and, you know, a lot of times, especially within eBay business, right. you try to explain it to people and yeah. they don't understand. See, I think that's the difference. And that's why I think I've really been, you know, we've really been enjoying putting our our profits that we make into this real estate that people can see. It's because a Because with thing, eBay, yeah. it's tough, you know. You're working at home. It's a home business. Like, maybe if you could try and tell people and they're like, yeah, whatever. I don't they care. Still don't or get like, it. Oh, so if you sold a couple of things, big deal, you know, they don't understand you've actually created this like business. that's pumping out. Yeah. You know, inventory. Hopefully pumping out and money. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. In yeah. Period. So, yeah. um, the other thing is I've noticed is that we're actually, I feel like if people were to hear our private conversations, our yeah. normal day to day, we probably would sound like very super negative people. <laughs> you think that about yep. you? 
about both of us. Me especially. I think that we actually spend a lot of time kind of bitching and worrying, you know? Um, yeah, sure. And, and, and I only bring that up because I just think it is a very normal thing. I think also anyone, any one of us can tend to get angry at the things that like scare us. Yeah. You, know? you get angry at things, but you know, like we just, you know, point out all the things we hate either a locally in our town or, you know, even in just the wherever. country or whatever. But the good thing is. And there is a good thing to this. Yes. As I do think, though, that we always bring it back. We talk about what we what we would do. Right. You know? And we've gotten to the point where, especially in our small town, that we're actually willing to put our money where our mouth is. Right. Like, instead of saying, right. oh, I wish someone would do that, we're like, no. Well, we got to do it. Let's actually do it. I mean, you know? I think that's that's... Like you said, that's the counterpoint to that's the show we're watching. Um, that's the counterpoint to the negative where you're like, Oh, why is this thing right. like this? Well, it doesn't matter. Like, if you don't improve it, just shut up, right. you know? <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of yeah, how I feel. Sure. like, yeah, you you complain and you whine and you yeah. are negative about things, not you, us, me, especially. And then you're like, Well, do something about it, yeah. And and, and I think that's a yeah. very normal thing to yeah but i guess the the thing that you know i i think that's why we started this podcast and the yeah. form that we have is because yeah when, when especially like you're an ebay or if right. you're an ebay seller it's very easy to fall into the trap of being very negative yes of course. and look yes. it's normal i get there it. are issues with the ebay platform right. there are issues with online selling yeah. it's always up and down you know yeah. it's just like it's not a steady state thing yeah and it's easy just to be like you know why is it ruining my my life why is ebay <laughs> trying to kill me feels like that sometimes. but you know like what we try and do around here is then say okay what can we do? What can we do? To actually change this. Go to an auction. Whatever. Just yeah. Shut up. Exactly. Go to an auction. Yeah. Go buy some stuff. So, yeah, a week ago, instead of posting this, well, what we're doing here, we posted an interview with Dan. Dan. Yep. From, uh... Well, uh, he's in New Jersey right. now. Yeah. And he, uh... You know, it's interesting. I used to do a lot of interviews. Yeah. Or more interviews with scavengers, and I kind of stopped doing it. Why, Jay? Because, just, I don't know. It's a time thing. I think. I, no, it, it, it was more like I was enjoying interviewing other scavengers because I wanted to uh, learn things. And it's not like I can't learn things still. Yeah. But I just feel like they were starting to get kind of the same and we weren't, you know, yeah. doing things. As, I don't know. I just feel like we weren't getting as much new info. And, you know, from time to time, I'll get emails from people who are like kind of brand new and they're really excited and they're like, I would love for you to interview me. And I'm just like, yeah, you really don't have enough experience. Like right. what you're excited about is the stuff that we've all kind of done. I would love to, yeah. to like with with Dan to interview more people who have been doing it for a while Yeah, and start hearing the kind of like what happens after all the excitement, right. after you've built it all up, tell me that. The like when you have a it's a mature eBay business. That's yeah, what it's I want to hear. Going. Yeah, like, like how are you what, keeping how, that going? How have you evolved over time? I mean, there right. there have been actually several people, including right. Dan, who is like, I might have a full time job. I'm still going to do eBay as my right. thing, but I might be doing this. And we've heard that from a couple people, and their lives just like right. things fluctuate, and that's interesting to hear how that goes. Yeah, I mean. There, I think, is a place other people can do that. I think it's always good to hear interviews with people who are just starting out. That's interesting. I just yeah. think for us, you know, that's what's interesting to us now is like, how do you keep going? And like yeah. you said, Dan is at a point where he, he works alone. He kind of has a helper, like a teenage kid who is helping him, okay. but he's basically yeah. has a worked alone. He's built up his business to like 7,000 items a in a store. Uh, and he really doesn't have like a big warehouse or anything. Yeah. He's just, and he's decided to try and get a job. Right. And it's because for him, it sounds like the big thing was he misses the social interaction that it, you can get at a job. Yeah. That's is, part of it. Is he still relatively young? I think he's in his late twenties. Okay, so, yeah. you know, yeah. unlike a yeah. lot of us, he didn't have that experience of like having like regular jobs, like a soul crushing office job. So maybe Just saying. he has like uh, <laughs> rose colored glasses, but you know, hey, wait, why not go and try that out? Yeah, uh, I know. For me, 
I never miss the social interaction. Um, yeah. I think because we're together and I don't know, I'm pretty good about just getting out in the world and. Well, like, also like, and he was talking about this, you know, he was part of local groups and, you know, people who have similar interests. Uh, and, you know, if you can get your social interaction that way and yeah. be independent, then I think you're doing okay. I will say the the more appealing thing to going back to getting a job and something we've talked about is a steady paycheck. Of course. That I can get. Yeah, sure. I mean, even with us, yeah. I think we're doing pretty well, but we talk about it. Sometimes. We still like, talk about wouldn't it. Wouldn't it be nice just to like... Have a job where, where you have every a- two weeks there's just like money in your account, like the same amount of money. It's not up or down. It's just the same. <laughs> I mean, cause and- look, like having this life for the last 15 years, yeah. you're like, there is no guarantee that I will make any money this week. Right. There never is. <laughs> and so to think like, yeah. oh, someone might pay me all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And like we had just gotten done with, we had like the six month contract. That was about as close as we've had yeah. to having a steady, a steady job. job. Uh, and that ended uh, right after Christmas. And uh, yeah, I think that we kind of got a little addicted to Yeah, that, we're like, money. we get paid all the time? This yeah, is amazing. It was like really... I mean, nice. obviously, you work a lot. Sure. It's not like you're working less. Sure. <laughs> you're working a but full-time there's job. there is no... There is no confusion as to right. what money you're exactly. going to get. Exactly. Right. Is, you um, can budget things. I mean, and... even there's a guy on the a forum. I think we interviewed him too. Troy. He goes by TSAT. <laughs> You've talked to him a few times, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he, his wife was uh, doing the eBay online business and then he actually quit his job and joined her and they right. were, like joined forces yep. and, you know, he's very like m- money accounting oriented yes. and, um, he actually announced that he's actually going back to work full time and his wife will then just continue to do eBay. And yep. you know what? I think that that's really common uh, as people's priorities change in life, yep. you know, uh, kids going to college. Or, and, you know, you have an opportunity to have a full time job for, yeah. uh, I mean, forever or yeah. for, you know, a couple of years and you're like, OK, I'll, I'll do it for now. Yeah, I mean, I would I would love to talk to him and see if it was purely just because of changing priorities and needing more stability yeah, or steady. if it started to get boring because yeah, they were selling a be. lot of clothes like that's a real grind it can be yeah. good thing is i think this is a very common story with yeah. a lot of you know people say oh i've been selling on ebay since 1999 well it would it what they really means is they started so selling some that's me then they got a job <laughs> yeah you know and then they started selling a little more and then they got a job you know yeah. so it's not like steady selling it's just ebay's always there it's always there for the you know yeah. a little here a little there yeah, yeah exactly you know uh but hopefully they've really built up a real business yeah and hopefully his wife can keep, keep that it going. going so if he ever needed to go back to it he doesn't He'll just jump to back in rebuild all exactly. that infrastructure because that's the thing i hear is you know a lot a lot of people say well i was sold a couple of years then something happened yeah and now i'm coming back but i'm starting from all scratch. over from scratch. Like I, we've talked about that at some points where we were where we were like, well, if we do enough Airbnb, you know, should we just not do eBay and just concentrate on that? And we're like, well, we already have it going. Like you mostly are like, it already is yeah. going. Like just keep it going. I know. I mean, you know, on, it's sometimes it's on life support a little bit. On but. our <laughs> tough weeks on eBay, I'm just like, should we just like? Cut, I know. Cut this, but then I'm like, we've built so much infrastructure. We have. We have the knowledge. We have the way of doing it. Even when things are slow, we're still making, you know, a thousand bucks a week. It's like, uh, It's like, why would you turn that off? You're crazy. Yeah. But so, yeah. Keep it going. Um, Okay. eBay. We've been talking about eBay, but this is full on eBay. Put it on your eBay helmet. (laughs) I will. The past couple months, we have been doing a free shipping experiment. Two months. Two months. People noticed. And, you know, and we were starting to get, like, emails from people like, hey, by the way, I'm looking at your store and everything. <laughs> see something And actually wrong. some people had mentioned it on the <laughs> forum, too, and we were like, we're not going to say anything. <laughs> They're like, something's wrong with your store. And it's true. We, you know, we are all about experiments. We've talked about yeah. it before. And, you know, like a lot of people, things are just seeming just really, really slow. And we are just trying to think, like... It felt like like a clogged pipe. Like, can we unclog this pipe? So we were like, let's just put the whole store 
free shipping. And that was like gigantic, heavy items, oversized things to very small things. We didn't change our prices. I was like, I did. There were some things that I took make, I took make offer off a lot of our store. Right. No, no, that's true. We put on free shipping, but we took off make offer and we took off like sales. So. I don't think I took make offer off everything. Oh, really? I think I had make offer on things over a hundred dollars, like the right. really high price things. I was like, yeah, I'll consider it really. Okay. Anyway. So look, anyway, this is the deal. This is what we learned. The very first week or two, yeah. it seems like we were selling a bunch of stuff, like more, like it seemed as if it worked, yeah. you know, selling older things. I don't right. know. Stuff I want to get rid of. But then it just went back to the way it normally works. Normal was. sales. So we're just selling normal stuff, but now everything's free shipping, you know? And uh, I will tell you. The second you put free shipping on, you will get orders from Hawaii. You will get orders from Alaska. California. You I mean, will you know, get orders across the furthest away you can possibly get. Do you think... I mean, I know that there are people that search and just say, show me yeah, stuff that's free. especially people in Hawaii. Do you think... Oh, that's right. So that that would make sense that the people who are on the edges of the country would be the ones most likely to be... Sh- Searching for free shipping. Yeah, like if you're right, exactly. So you're thinking, oh, I want to buy something from California or anywhere, right? Uh, I want free shipping. I'm just saying that, you know, especially the people in Alaska and Hawaii, they're like, I want to pay $50 shipping. Right. Who's got free shipping? Right. That's And right. it was me. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that was a $40 item that's heavy. It's going so, to Hawaii. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we still made money. Yeah, sure. Not as much. But we did two things. We we taught ourselves like, oh, yeah, free shipping is not some kind of panacea where like, yeah. you know, because I, I feel like people make it all so simple. Like, oh, if you just put free shipping on everything, then like you're just going to sell out a bunch of stuff. What it comes down to in my mind is just like, do you have stuff that people want? That's what it is. I mean, it's just as easy as that. Look, I mean, <laughs> we have talked about this in the last few weeks where the newest eBay CEO was saying this about like, you know, market, what do they call it? Like the new market norms, you know, right. the new online norms, like everything's free shipping on Amazon. So you have to, and it's like for small long tail sellers like us who are not selling commodity items, it does not make sense. It just doesn't. Right. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, and I just don't think it matters either. You know, it I don't just think it doesn't. matters. Does someone want that really weird vintage lamp? Right. Yes, they do. Right. And they will pay, you know, $15 right. shipping. They'll, they'll pay what they need to pay. Or they're going to give you an offer and you're going to bring the price down anyway. Yeah. So you're like... You know, I, I think I think we did learn that it's not a magic trick. Right. Turning that on is not magic for us. You know, maybe if you're an iPhone seller, iPhone, you know, case well, seller. Yeah, I you, think those have people to have to do free shipping because there's so much competition. But yeah, I think it just really comes down to, do you have stuff that people want? And I just think we have a store full of long tail items and we're still selling. I mean, yeah. Um, where was it? I was going to say, yeah, so we've sold 1,900 items in the past 12 months. Oh, wow. You know. Um, that's a lot of stuff. It gives you that, that thing. Yeah, I mean, that's about 20% of our store that we you wow. know, sold. Yeah, uh, it is. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, that's pretty amazing to me. Those day-to-day sales do add up. Yeah, you know? they do. I mean, I'm sure if you were to tell like someone that runs like uh, <laughs> like Walmart, you know, they're like, you only sold 20% of your entire inventory. We've sold our whole store over 10 times in a year. Because, you know, that's just, it's a different, it's a different mentality. It's just... But to me, I'm just like, I think of our our like storage warehouse out there. I'm like, wow, 20%. It's like, you know, four full shelves of stuff every year. That's like amazing. It's a know? lot, right? That's a lot for us. Yeah. So yeah, so you know, free shipping, not magic, uh, and yeah. sometimes it made me really mad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Yep. And we've been we turned shipping on what two weeks ago, I guess, and we're basically selling the same exact amount. Yeah, just now people pay to ship, and um, so all good. That's it. Yeah, yeah. People are like, right when we turned it off. We made a couple of sales and you're like, 
They paid for shipping. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So you were asking something about why eBay doesn't allow us to search our purchases like you can on Amazon. Yeah, so I buy a lot of stuff on a buying account for our rentals or renovations or or to sell resell on eBay. I do that all the time. So on Amazon, there'll be times where like the other day you're like, we need more twin fitted sheets. So I search my Amazon purchases. Okay, this was eight months ago that I bought these, but I want to buy the same ones. Twin sheets, Amazon purchase records. Great. I want those same ones, blah, blah, blah. eBay, you cannot do that. You're like, I want to search everything I bought last year, 2019. They still have the records for a lot of those. Um, And it's just like page one, page two, page three. Page four. So I'm going, I'm sh- show me the maximum amount, a hundred items or whatever. Um, and then I search the page using like the browser search function. It's like, you know, command F and I'm like twin sheets or whatever. And then, oh, page two, page three. Just let me search it. Why can't you just let me search? Let me search yeah. it. It's, it's just a search term. Yep. I find that very annoying for someone who buys a lot. We also, I mean, we've talked about this too. In the past, we had someone buy a jacket from us. Yes, from uh, it's New Zealand, Australia, Australia, and um, and it turned out only because it, you kind of remembered his name, I guess it, that that he's bought multiple things from us over the years, over like five years, right? And that eBay on the on the purchase page gives you no reference to that or the messages, right? What I feel so he actually mentioned it. He he was like. Hey, I really have loved your stuff over the years. I bought several things from you. And I'm like, I thought I recognized his username. What should happen is when they send you a message or an offer or whatever, there should be a little pop-up that's like, hey, SM675 has bought from you. Yeah, four times. You know, he bought these items. Would you, and also like, would you like to give him... Discount. Like a 5% like friendly discount just or to keep him coming back. Because you know? he's really into vintage jackets like um, bomber jackets, whatever, like right. um, rockabilly type stuff. You're like, this is a relationship you want to have over the years that right. eBay's not helping foster because they're not just giving you that little bit of info. Right. Like, I should start talking to this guy. Oh, you're interested in these jackets? Well, yeah. I always have these, you yeah. know? Yeah. So. It's true. Right, eBay. That's us complaining. There you go. <laughs> eBay, but are you listening? We gave a solution, so yeah, you know, we're the, not the just solution is. Okay, our numbers this week, we sold 26 items. So that's a little bit low. Not a lot of items for us. I wasn't shipping very much at all. And our sales were about a thousand bucks. So we're just like at It's kind just of like what squeaking by, sell. man. Yep. Uh, but again, that is on our long tail inventory uh we did go to an auction we're listing items i am listing new items right. one of the things that sold this morning we bought just a couple weeks ago right so we have to eat our own dog food yep like you like to say that's yeah. really gross <laughs> but we need new inventory yeah. like we need to put new stuff up new old items yeah, yeah. You know. i mean really that's the other thing with our free shipping experiment is just like i we need to just get back yeah, to scavenging more it's like just list. we need to list more and just uh you know if we are not excited about scavenging like you're dead you know yeah um, you're dead you're dead you're you, you don't he, exist he, as a scavenger you're he, not scavenging he did <laughs> he did what he did he did <laughs> um Okay, things we sold. Um, we sold. Oh, we sold that. Uh, we sold a shovel. Yeah. Today. <laughs> does that count? Does today count? It's nope. yesterday. Today so. does not count. Sorry. Saturday to Saturday. We just sold so many random. The cool thing is, we sold these two. Mu- I mean, those. Mugs. This is when I'm gonna. Lo- I'm gonna uh, ruin somebody here. Okay. We sold. Mugs. <laughs> we sold two mugs for twenty five dollars each. You know, and someone's like mugs. I see them all the time. I'll just buy mugs. I'll like, only be a mug seller. These are very specific mugs. They were GM Pontiac Fiero. And you know what? They were feel Mac- the power. They were McCoys. Yep. They were made by McCoy. Right. What? They were like 1980s. They had cool design on them, and we had two of them, and a guy bought both of them. And now so this... we made 50 bucks on like something that cost us 50 cents. It was 50 bucks. Take that Walmart. Now, <laughs> $50 rugs. The thing about this sale, though, is one of those like, 
you got to love eBay. This person messaged me. Now you can send an offer through the message. They were like, I want to buy this mug for $25. I want the second mug for $25. I want you to charge me $10 for shipping. I'm like, great. I love this. So I'm like, I will send you a, a reply with a an offer for this one. You need to message me through the other mug mm. so I can send you an offer. Because it was two separate it was two separate listings. Because they, they had two different patterns right. on the back. So they were yeah. kind of different a little bit. This I had to handhold this person for like a day mm. to like get them to figure they were like yeah. and finally they wrote me a message, a very long message that was like I have a brain injury, so I'm having trouble understanding what you're talking about. So, Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that. So I'm like, you know, of course. I'm like, I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. I'm going to do this. You need to do this. Right. And then I'll do this. And don't pay for it. So I have to right. do a combined. It should just be like, <laughs> it, should, it should just be like, here's the invoice. Right. Hit okay. And <laughs> then everything's going to be okay. It would be lovely for eBay, especially this person was not global shipping, but other people who have been global shipping and they're like, I want to buy all this stuff. And you're like, how do I like create a bundle that's like, here's your bundle. Right. Go buy it. Like yeah. I throw it over to their so cart. So here's the answer. eBay VR. Okay. So we're all <laughs> going to have VR glasses. And that yes. means that me and a buyer can sit in a virtual in a room. reality room. A store. A store. But it, it can be any kind of store. There can be like a river running through your store. There's like little fairies coming through. Parrots. <laughs> He has like a horse's head. I'm like a pirate. That is real. And then he's really? like virtually grabbing items and putting it in, on the table. Well, it wouldn't be a table. It would be a mushroom. It would be a cart. On a mushroom. A shopping cart. No, okay. And then, and then I can just like punch. I can punch some things and then the sale will Look, happen. Look, how we're ridiculously describing is a cart. Right. I mean, people can't... Look, you can put stuff in your cart. Okay. But whether it combines shipping or, yeah. do, you know... I think that's no the thing I get confused about. I mean, eBay does have a cart system, but it doesn't it just seem is to... Not, it's not like an Amazon cart. Oh, yeah. boy. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we just sold a bunch of random stuff. It was awesome. It's good. But we only sold 26 of them, which Let's is... Let's double like, that yeah. number. Um, <laughs> Please. Yeah. So, that's good. Um, okay. Customer issues. Um... So this is the thing that has, people have talked about on the forum recently, and it's happened to us this week too. So someone wants to return an item, yeah. and they a message us, can I return this item? And to me, I'm just like, what? The, the answer is always, or at least it's for us, of it's, course you can. Like there's, there's a clear, there. there's a clear policy. It's on the item. You know, eBay has a system. Like, do you have to? spend any time responding to people like that i feel like ebay should just allow us to ignore people like that because i don't know if they're fishing for something if right. i mean yeah period yeah so I don't well know. and this yes yes i feel like um we'll get messages from people where they're like yeah i didn't really like this i want to return it like it's so like, i mean Ooh. let me ask you because we haven't really talked about it that person wants to return that item right and they've a message us and we haven't um you know, yeah, I have a message them back. back. And I feel like if we don't, then they're going to like, you know, do an INAD claim. Right, when you're like, and it's then, not. And then you're going to call eBay and eBay is going to be like, well, well, you didn't like talk to them. I and I'm to, like, why do I need to talk to them? Of course they can just return. Just open it. a return. There's, there's a process. There's a button that says eBay free guarantee yeah. shipping. Yeah. I'm literally going to pay for the shipping back right. for this thing. Um, which I don't want to do, obviously. So but can so should we just write back and be like, yes? I mean, yeah. What more like, do we need yes. to do? Yeah. And then they're like, "What's your address?" You're just like, "Oh my god, yeah. are you serious?" Yeah, I, right. Yeah. So you're trying know, to avoid that. I know there are people getting mad at us. Is like you're you're um, a bad customer bad service. customer service, and I get it. But part but of I'm it also is like. Just, like I don't want you to return. Like this how thing. many hoops do I need to jump through to, to get you to return to get my you item. to return something that you're probably going to say is my fault that I have to pay for? Yeah. <laughs> I'll do right. Like I feel like just by you know being in the free return guaranteed shipping program, 
that, that should, you're like I shouldn't be required to handle like people, I need to right? like walk into our virtual reality store and, right. and handhold them through the return right. process like that's the last thing I want to do this week right. yeah exactly yep. no I agree so so you in, know so in the EB VR I would be King Kong and I'd be holding <laughs> I'd holding be holding the, the buyer <laughs> and taking them over to the return cart and like holding their hand and then I think, and then they're in a waterfall getting all wet. <laughs> I think what what's funny is when people have like 500 feedback and they're asking that question. You're like, yeah, how many things have you bought? On the forum, we were talking about this. Someone was I mentioning someone else doing that where and everyone was like, it just sounds like they're like fishing for. Like a partial free refund. Yeah, like they're asking you because they're telling you they're going to return it and they're hoping you're going to say... I'll just give you your money back. Keep the item. You know I'm not going to say yeah, that. So It's a good question. Yeah. It's a, when do you start the silent treatment? That's the question. I think we need to answer that yes. and say yes. Just say Period. yes, you can return it. Period. Then it's silent treatment because if they now they have a choice. Out. Yeah, yeah exactly. So some other things we learned in the forum. Um, so Simon was saying, and this is, Ryan, this is going to be really in your ballpark. Yeah. So PayPal includes the sales tax that have been collected and remitted back to the states. You yes. Know, this is brand new. We've, we've never done this on our federal income tax. So this is going to be a new thing for all of us. So eBay has indicated that the sales tax amount will also be included in PayPal's 1099. So that 1099 we get from PayPal will include all the sales tax we've got. Good God. So then we need to figure out what sales tax got taken out and sent back to the states because we should not be paying taxes. Like that that's not. An, that's, you just have to take that number and that's say like sales gross tax income, submitted. Right. And so. Like you got to put it on a line item. So we need, so actually people in the forum were talking about, you know, how to find out. Okay, hold on. So my question is, I have to look at my 1099 because they sent it to me through PayPal. I haven't looked at it yet. I don't want to look at it. Um, So is it in a separate box? Oh my God. So So I have to figure that out. So PayPal's not in a separate box, but so everyone was like, well, if you go to eBay, that there might be some ways to figure out if eBay has you know, pulled out. It's just like, you know, it tells you how many, how much a shipping costs you've done. Right, and, but where, you know, where do you find that well, information? If you were on the forum, if you would have known, Simon was very helpful. Okay. What did he say? Are you going to answer? Are you going to talk about it? Oh my God. It's on the forum. So, uh, that is something <sighs> we're all going to have to figure out. I, I, I'm not trying to stress you out. Okay. Well, that is very good to know because if that's in your gross, it's just mixed in right. like a stew. I mean, it's just like when we were first starting eBay and we realized we had to pay taxes and all this stuff. We were like, PayPal's not telling you how much I paid in shipping, so we had to go on eBay and figure out how to do that. I, think, I wonder if... I think PayPal does tell you how oh, much is in shipping. Okay. Yeah, they're like shipping costs. Well, our our GoDaddy bookkeeping actually breaks that out, so Good. I should actually see... I'm sure it's all there. I gotta go look. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm just bringing it up because for anyone that, you know, I know there's a lot of people that don't like to do their taxes. I mean, who really does? But we like to get it done early so we know how much we owe. Some people like to put that stuff off to like April 10th. really bad. So I'm telling people this is something you have to be aware of. Don't put it off. Like you're telling me right now, Ryan, go look at this. And I'm like, oh God, no. Because it's January 26th. I'd love to meet with our accountant, you know, early February, mid February. So the problem is when you're a freelance contractor and you're waiting for 1099s from people, and I'm like, but I can tell you how much I made. And our accountant's like, I still need that 1099. No, no, no. no, no. I we we argue about this every year. Really? We are, every year. He wants the piece of paper, but he's willing to accept our, our stated number. amount. He's just saying for just legal tidy sake have the paper i can he he says i'll do your taxes based on this but give me those so i can stick it in the uh, record so the irs is happy and if for some reason it it comes in different okay so that he has it he's like i need that paper because it's for us we only have maybe two or three i mean we don't have a lot but it's just you know it's not like we have a million they also just take forever to send them i'm like send them file that away in your memory okay i okay I, i have an issue about that that we'll talk about after this podcast okay (laughs) no one needs to know the rest of that but yeah luke 
had some interesting ideas on collecting because we had been talking about like going to that auction and this a woman who had died had like this giant oh, collection teapot. of teapot like huge Redi- like 500 500 right. minimum and that they all got sold off and like i um, literally could not wait through it i was like we right. have to leave <laughs> i can't stand but this. it all got sold you know a lifetime of collecting got sold off in a pretty quick amount of 45 time minutes. Up. and he was like you know it's interesting that people are still collecting because i was like does anyone Does really anyone collect anymore? These? he was like but the collecting are different now. So it's no longer people collecting like Hummels and um, mm-hmm. uh, a Ladro. Is that what that is? Ladro. I don't, I don't know, know what something. that is. Uh, but sure now know. people are doing like action figures. Oh, for sure. And vintage cameras and yeah. typewriters. Like there's yeah. a different yeah. kind of collecting. One of our helpers collects vintage typewriters. Old computers, you know. And so he's right. The younger people are still collecting just different things. It's different stuff. Comic books, yeah, video totally, games, totally. you know. What's interesting to me, though, is that if you take that mindset, people who, you know, the baby boomers are older who are collecting, like, China and these, like, figurines, now younger people are collecting, like, comic books and vintage cameras and yeah. video games. There's a big gap in what is being collected now versus what you can find at auctions. Because it's mm, right. the, you can't. Yes. It's like the baby boomers and their parents who are dying off, and they have the stuff that not as many people right. want. And so and it's almost it's, like there's going to be another tsunami when people like me die off the Gen X. That's when you know I feel like the Gen X are the, are the ones that started. They're like, look collecting. at this laptop. What am I going to do with this <laughs> right. MacBook Air from yeah. 2015? Like yesterday, we went to an estate sale in our town, which we don't do very often because they're not very good, and it wasn't very good. It was like a woman who was like 90 had passed away, and they were yeah. selling off everything in her house, and it was just like I literally could not find one. Her thing to collections. Buy were worthless. I mean... I mean, some of this stuff was interesting. Like, there was Wedgwood. Right. There was a couple... But you're like... And, and I don't want to sound, like, like inhumane. I mean, I'm sure it meant something to her, and that's fine. But just when you just get down to brass tacks, is this stuff that you, this a woman collected... Uh, it, 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 does yeah. anyone does want it? Does anyone want it? it? And well, the answer is really... Maybe 10% really. of the stuff people were buying, but everything else was just kind of... I don't know. So-so. It was just... Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of china and tchotchkes and punch bowls and, you know, you're just like, what am I going to do? I mean, there's some stuff. Look, there's some high-end stuff that you can find that is those things. Right. And you're like, somebody wants those. And so that's the thing, though, is for our task, us, everyone in this uh, room right here, in this uh, virtual... VR room, <laughs> yeah, with a river running through it. Um, we, you know, we're it's nostalgia dealers. We, yeah. we we've talked about Absolutely. this before. You know, like this long tail that that we talk about. This, yeah. this weird, wacky vintage stuff. It's really we're selling. It's nostalgia, and you yeah. have to figure out what it people. Yeah, it's you know a wanting right. Like well, and it's hard because look, I have way too much china but i do sell it right you know like there are some things where i'm like i would never look at this but it's a really good brand so i'm gonna get it and so it um, takes a real eye to do this kind of work yeah. to value this the it's nostalgia of yeah. something i mean that's the thing like you know we can go anywhere flea market auction estate sale garage sale and it looked at it, it does not matter how much they're charging right i'm always thinking What's the nostalgic value of this right. thing? If someone's going to see this and be like, oh, I remember this thing and it has such powerful, intense feelings for me, I got to get I it. will pay you a lot of uh, money for it. Like, that's the way I'm thinking. Or pay you any money, any right. price. What, yeah. what price? $30? <laughs> I don't know. And I guess that's the interesting thing with going to auctions now is that there's a lot of stuff that had. It, yeah. It's nostalgic value for people who are just getting older and not collecting anymore. And they don't have that. Or they're yeah. dying off themselves, exactly. you know? And so you're, but there are some things, there are little tiny segments that the young people 
are still into right you know so even though the 98 year old lady loved it right the 28 year old is into that too yeah. and we we talk about some yeah. primitive stuff right mid-century modern right, right, right. industrial yeah you know yeah and and then the other so th- this is like 4d chess here we're playing the other thing is you you you, 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 well, you have to figure all this out before the big companies realize it too and start to sell you fake it's nostalgia. Which we already see, and just like the you market. said. Right. Like, you know, you go to Home Goods and you're like, oh my God. Like, it's they're selling century. all the cool stuff that we used to find at the auctions. They've just now copied they just it all. make it in China. And they're getting it yeah. because they're getting into, yeah. you know, farmhouse tables. And, and look, like, it's because the people in charge of marketing and, you know, merchandise are our age. Right. They're not 80 years right. old. They're our age. Right. They're like looking on eBay. They're looking on Etsy. They're looking and, on apartment therapy. And they're, they're like, oh, you know, I remember 2008, you could find an old Polaroid for 50 cents at the thrift store, yeah. sell it online no for $50 longer. because people were like, oh, Polaroid nostalgia. And then there were people our age who were like, wait a second. Let's people, make a huge business out of Let's this. make these. And now you can't sell Polaroids. Yeah, because you just buy a yeah. new Polaroid right. instant yeah. camera. Exactly. That's so, brand new and not broken. So I guess that's the thing. You're just trying to like get into a niche before it like gets like flooded out. And then you have to find a new one. And uh, and there's and that's why I go back to like sometimes there is such like a – uh, a feeling of like, oh, just getting a job and getting a steady paycheck would be so, so nice bad. because I don't, think about I don't have this. to like play this game. But that's the fun of it. You know, I mean, look, having an office job as we've both had, um, you know, you're doing other people's jobs. You know, you're you're working yeah. for other people and, and yeah. creating things for them. Right. And that's not what we Wage want to do. slave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So the final thing I wanted to talk about was there was a new seller that came on our forum who was just asking really like good questions that any new person should ask themselves. And they were like, if I find something and I bring it home and I start to do a, a research on it and I can't find it anywhere, what do I do? Because, I mean, I think the question is, is this thing worth a million dollars? Because no one has talked about it before. Or on the other end of the spectrum, does nobody care? <laughs> yeah. And that's what a lot of more experienced sellers were sharing is that, yeah, it's one of two things. It's like it hasn't been posted online because it's just junk. Right. Even if it's old. I think that's one thing I remember that I had to uh, learn early on. Just because something is old does not make it valuable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I may be like, this is so cool. It's been like passed down through history. Like yeah. it must be worth something, but very often it's just not worth anything. It's, like, it's just not. And there's a lot of junk out there. Yeah. And then some people were like, yeah, I mean, maybe it might be something really rare. So what people say is I'll put it up for a really high price for like a month. Yeah. And then if I don't get any messages or offers or hits – then I'm like, yeah, it's not it worth anything. Right. And you bring the price back yeah. down. Well, that's yeah. what's cool about eBay yeah. is you can say, okay, this thing is $200 or more or whatever. Best offer. If people are like, oh, I'll give you 50. I'll give yeah. you 50. I'll give you 50. You're like, mm, maybe it's only worth and, 50. I mean, I was telling her too, just like, yeah, don't get sucked into that trap that I think a lot of brand new people do where they're like – a yeah. researching half an hour for every single item and never listing it. But then other people were like, "Ah, when you're starting out, that's not a bad thing that's because true. in the process of researching, it you're seeing a lot other of different. Stuff. You know, it's you're researching a pair of shoes, and in half an hour, you're going to uh, learn a lot about that segment of shoes right. that you'll then see out in the world and you'll know the price of that yeah. stuff. And so I think over time you're going to research less and less. Just my suggestion was don't get like the analysis paralysis where you're just like if I don't find the answer, I'm not going to put this on. Right, the right. It, it, if you can't find the answer or you do find the answer and you still don't do anything because you don't know what's right, um you know, just just take action. Yeah. Like that's the important thing is I feel like so many new sellers that I know personally in the world where they're like, 
yeah, I don't really know what to do. Should I do this? Is it this much? Is it? And then they just don't do anything. And you're like, well, that's the, the point is to do something. So make sure you keep going. It sounds like she did. So yeah, I mean, those are all normal things that we all uh, went through. Like when yeah. uh, you price things now. How often do you mm. research? Like 10% of the time? Or my question is, I feel like at this point, if you start seeing everything. And really, it may seem like there's an infinite amount of stuff out there. But honestly, after a while, you yeah. kind of start seeing the same stuff again and yeah. again. I mean, pretty much. Like, it's pretty yeah. rare that we see something we've never seen before. So... How often are you actually doing like a research? I would say 30% of the time okay. because there are times where I'm like, okay, I've sold uh, this type of thing before, but not made out of this material. Do people really want this? Is it rare? Is it expensive? Is it cheap? You know, there, there are right. questions that I have, or I've seen these shoes a million times, but this is a different brand. Is this a higher end brand? Is this a generic brand? Like, what is this? Right. And and prices that we knew five years ago might, right, be, might be different, different. now. Yeah. You know, so down. you know, it's pretty quick. Where within a few minutes, I'm like, okay, I've made a decision. Right. You know, this is my decision. Right. Um, this is my decision. Are you is, sure? Is this it, your answer? Is this your final answer? I'm like, yep. But, you know, so, yeah, not as much. I mean, there'll be times where I'm not researching anything. I'm just like, I want this for it. But, right. you know, I had these, like, wooden sculptures that I bought in an estate sale um, that I was listing. And I was like, well, these are kind of rare or they can be and they can be very expensive. But are these those ones? <laughs> Probably not. But I yeah. do want to price them high-ish. You know, like, it's that level where I'm sort of like... Is it this? Is it this? And it, it sort of like narrows itself down where I'm like, okay, here's my answer. You right. know, so it's not so much that I'm like, I have no idea what this is. Yeah. You know, it's like, and and we talked about this. It's before. That's why for us, then if you put make offer on stuff, that then like gives you kind of a valve yes. that a buyer can take advantage of to yeah. give you a lower offer. So if you're off on the price, they'll yeah. tell you that you know, or that's why people put on sales. Right. From time and again, because it brings those prices down. So and just people might um, be willing to do it outright. You know, again, way. if you have like a commodity item, it's much easier to like get it within like three pennies <laughs> of what the price of that item yeah. is, just because it's such a saturated market and and just the search engines tell you this yeah, item this is, is worth this amount. With these other things that yeah, it's nostalgic items. It's You're, just you know, prices are everywhere because it depends on the quality of it. The what's the what's it, it made out of? Yeah, did you know like what's the story behind it? Is there a story behind it? Right. Uh, you know, so like these sculptures, it looked like someone had traveled to China. Um, you know, like mid century right. after the war, or whatever. Um, and I'm just kind of like. Are these old and they bought them in China? Are they tourist stuff that they bought in China? You know, like it's yeah. it's it's that whole thing where it's not something from home goods made in China. Right. It actually it was. It doesn't know, have like a label on it. Yeah, it's so like those are easy. Like that's the thing with like China, like actual not the country China, but like a yeah. piece of China. Piece of China is that often it will have like a mark on it. Yeah, and, and you're like this a is name. researchable. And, and you're like. This is the name. This is the pattern. And they're like, okay, that's a price. Great. Yeah. You know, there yeah. you go. The, here's the median price. Okay. Here's a question for you. Okay. We bought this really awesome photo album yes. for like 10 bucks, I think. Was yeah. it 10 or 20 it like bucks? 10, it was 10 bucks. But it was like a photo album from the 40s. Post-war. This young a woman went to uh, Germany after the war, like yeah, it was Europe. It was yeah. like all of Europe. And the cool thing is, is that the photos are well taken, and they're in the thing, and they have like she hand wrote under where every they were. single photo. And it's like, and and it's not just like pictures of like trees and a car. It's like people, people, which is so cool. We have never found something in this quality shape where the photos aren't just all falling out. My question to you is, yeah. How do you price that? I think I'm going to look for other similar items and see how much people price them and see how much they sold for. Got it. Uh, going off of that, 
I still price things higher. Right. Depending on my quality and how much I want. <laughs> but with make offer. Right. I might be like, this is an amazing historical document. I want a ridiculous yeah. amount of money. Yeah. Make offer. Now, I didn't go into it too deeply, but I was flipping through it. Yeah. If we could find a name, I feel like that would that would just like seal the someone's deal. Name. Because if you could find out a last name or someone's name, if you could find the, the you know, the people yeah. would find you. And I've done that before with other like estate sale items mm-hmm. where someone's name is clearly on there and yeah. I try to use it in the title. But if it doesn't always fit all the information, I put it in the description because people will find that because sure. eBay does search the description. But I didn't too. see a name on it, unfortunately. I have to look around and I actually might have information from the estate sale that mm-hmm. had something on it. Um, another item that had mm-hmm. the name on it. So I just have to look around. So, so there you go. Yep. Bob's your uncle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, let's go to the questions that people sent in. You can email us an audio file. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Or you can call our voicemail phone number uh, at any time. We never pick up. The phone number is 540-407-8486. You have three minutes to leave a message. Hi, guys. Um, I have a a question for you. I've noticed on some of your listings, instead of the word spelling out the word vintage, right, VTG. Uh, and I actually did a test on a few of your uh, your items and just to, saw, just to see if I searched vintage in the words of the title, if it would come up and it did. So I'm wondering if there's a, um, if there's a list on eBay of acronyms or abbreviations that would revert back to the full word, like VTG, VTG for vintage or NIB for new in box. All right, thanks. This is a vintage classic store on eBay. Thanks. Bye. You mean VTG classic store? No, just kidding. Um, so I wish that there was a list because I would love to abbreviate antique because I sometimes I'm like, it's vintage, but it's older than that. So it's antique, but I have to spell out the word antique. So VTG for whatever reason. How do we uh, learn that? I feel I like that know. was it's a long just, time ago. Look, it's just when you're searching other people's items, you're like, it says VTG when I typed in vintage. VTG came up. Right. Now, the issue for me is sometimes I'll list stuff on Facebook or Craigslist trying to use the same search terms, VTG, and um, those are not recognized. <laughs> so you'll write a title, VTG, blah, 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 mid-century, and Craigslist is like, yeah, that's not a search term. It seems like it's only with eBay. I don't know the list. Um, NIB for new inbox, I feel like that's really old school before there were like condition, item condition, like, uh, what do you call them? Whatever they're called. The things, the data that people are required to do. Um, So NIB, I don't know. I feel like that's a wasted uh, search term keyword in your title. I probably have a bunch of them, but I try not to do it now. So yeah, I don't think there's a definitive list. It would be awesome if eBay did give us a list. Like, I would love to abbreviate certain things. Antique, mid-century. Some people use MCM, but I also am like, people aren't... I never search MCM. I search vintage mid-century. Honestly, I think some of that is also just whatever. I don't know the word. is crowdsourced. It just becomes the uh, norm. Like, people know to search MCM, even though it's not like eBay official. Yeah, it's just a, 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 yeah. You know, people come up with those names. Right. So VTG works on eBay. It probably doesn't work anywhere else. Uh, Hey, guys. Uh, First and foremost, I just want to thank you for your podcast. It's really awesome. I love listening to it. I've learned so much from you all. Um, Inspired every week, so keep it up. Um, and next I just want to talk a little bit about the last couple of weeks and what has been, uh, mentioned. One of the things that you guys have been talking about is like, who is the new market for eBay? And, um, I'm a high school teacher and I think it's really interesting how, um, the kids and the teenagers today are, you know, really focused on, um, climate change and of course I kind of live in an area where that's sort of a big thing and renewable and uh I think that there really is going to be a change in the market of these young people looking to purchase used and 
uh, you know, resold items. And I'd really like to see eBay kind of step it up and start marketing to that younger generation. It's kind of interesting to me uh, in the interview that you posted, the guy who was around 27 said, um, you know, Facebook isn't dead, uh, you know, amongst my students who, you know, are like 15 to 20, and I've been teaching those students teaching these kids for a long time, you know, Facebook really is dead and it's not a thing that they, you know, pay attention to if they're on social media, it's on Snapchat, it's on TikTok, it's like newer sort of, you know, formats. And so it'd be kind of interesting and exciting to see if eBay sort of steps it up a little bit and starts marketing towards uh, that generation because I think there really is, uh, you know, a market uh, for us as resellers to get them and those kids excited about using, you know, eBay as a platform for buying, like, used quality goods, um, you know, as a, you know, a way of, you know, thinking globally and thinking uh, uh, about the climate and about, um, you know, climate change and whatever. So I just thought I'd throw that out there and see what you guys think about it. Thank you. Agreed a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean... That's my sense of with Facebook is that, I mean, I feel like it's kind of a dying platform, whether or not they can get younger people back in droves. But I just well, feel they're like, lucky that they own Instagram because right. Instagram's huge. Snapchat's huge. TikTok's and huge. And they bought a WhatsApp, too. And they so. bought WhatsApp. So that's the whole thing. But I agree with what she's saying, where eBay has an opportunity with the generation that's coming up now. Like our 11-year-old nephew has an iPhone 11, yep. which is amazing. But you're like, he's going to be exposed to this It's interesting, though. He does know eBay. He does know. Well, right. he knows it through us, right? Every time we're over there, he's like, why don't we, go, we go on, on eBay? Let's go on eBay. And he likes to search for like sports paraphernalia. Or like old coins or like, what's the most expensive, whatever. So that's cool. But I agree that eBay has an opportunity. And it's so funny because eBay is like, in air quotes, a legacy Silicon Valley company from the beginning. And you're like, you are in the belly of the beast. All these startups, all these new startups, they should be, you know, getting with them and, and, you know, having, having marketing, uh, maybe they are, I don't know. I'm 40 years old. Maybe I, I'm definitely not on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I see t- TikTok videos, other places, but, um, I agree because the climate change movement is broadening to that generation. Cause they're the ones that have to take care of it. Right. So, um, yeah, I think they have a huge opportunity in marketing to be like, yeah, buy secondhand, buy on eBay. Don't right. buy on Amazon, you know, Seriously. for sure. Yeah. How are they going to do that? I don't know. Do they listen to yeah. the podcast? I feel I like know. eBay, you know, because they are an example of like one of the few Silicon Valley companies that have, you yeah. know, they were one of the first yep. big ones and they've stayed that they've big, stayed. that they're very hesitant to make a lot of changes to the platform because it will alienate people that have been on the platform for so long. But I feel like at some point they're doing such incremental changes and I feel like they're trying to please everyone. It just makes it more of a mess. And like if you're new to the platform, you're just like, what is going on? This is not <laughs> intuitive. It's It makes sense for the people that have been there all this time because they knew where the old stuff is. They kind of know where the a new stuff is. And it's like, I just feel like at some point they might just have to be like, you know what? If, if the people that have been on this platform can't make a substantial change so we can make a clean, modern, like, website and uh, handheld mobile yeah platform then uh forget them you know it's like you've got to step into the future i know that's gonna be very controversial but yeah look there there are pages on ebay like i will look at someone's page someone will send me a link and i'll look at an item page and it looks all new and design and then i say like read description or like check out more info because i can't see any shipping info and it goes back to the old page you're like what is going on Uh, this is so weird (laughs) but you know i mean who knows i i I agree i like that call a lot actually Hey, Scavenger Life. Uh, this is debit and credit from the forum. Uh, working on my taxes, so not a question, more like an alert to everyone, just to let you know what we dreaded is happening. PayPal is reporting the taxes that eBay collects on our behalf, 
as income on our side. It's showing up on our 1099K, or at least it's showing up on mine. So make sure that you if you're, I figured out how to do it in GoDaddy. There's probably a way on PayPal, but uh, make sure you figure out how much tax eBay paid on your behalf and then uh, claim that as a deduction on your return. Thanks, guys. Love your show. Bye. Debit and credit. Yeah, he's he's been very good on the a forum with you know, helping people and giving good info. That is, we were just talking about that. So you know, there's obviously ways to do it, whether it can be done through PayPal or we use GoDaddy because it pulls in all the info. It should uh, separate it out as a category. Yeah. Um, what I've seen on GoDaddy um, bookkeeping is it, it'll bring in your PayPal info and it's like, this was the sale. This was the shipping. Yeah. Hopefully they're like, this was the sales tax. Um, so I obviously have to go look at that, yeah. but I mean, I'm glad or, you called. Or I don't know if eBay gives that info either, you know, so we'll see. I gotta look around. I, I will say for anyone that uses GoDaddy bookkeeping, and this could just be us, we have a couple of bank accounts that GoDaddy bookkeeping can no longer sync to. And we try to like contact them and they're like reset it and then you can't really contact the bank and and then it just becomes aware like we can't do anything because the bank and they can't i mean and, and, and the account we're talking about there's three accounts right on it so i'm like right. i have to do these manually like now. three checking accounts yeah. yeah so it's uh it really makes GoDaddy bookkeeping a less a uh, useful if they can't Sync connect, my bank account. Sync to bank accounts and like bring all that. I can do it manually, but I have to do it manually on three different accounts from that bank. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is. And not I fun. think it's one problem is because we, it's a local, small, local bank, which I bet if we were with like Bank of America, it'd be no problem. But yeah. I love our small, a local bank. I just wish that they could. Well, the other thing better. is we have another account from a different small local bank. And that, and they actually use the same backend, like a similar, like it looks exactly the same when you sign in and that one works fine. So I'm kind of like, guys, right. I don't know if anyone else is having that problem, but we are. Yeah. Okay. That's it for the calls. Okay. Thanks for calling, coming, being here, driving, working. Um, we post this Sunday nights, Monday morning, but it will definitely be there Monday morning. You can check out our other podcast. It's it's with Ashley and I, shampooandbooze.com. We talk about Airbnb and short-term rentals. I'm posting a new one tomorrow morning. Um, we talk about design advice. If you're interested in short-term rentals or doing that as another business, <laughs> we talk about it. We love it. We love answering questions. We love showing off people's places. Shampooandbooze.com or youtube.com slash shampooandbooze. Um, okay. Thank you very much for being here. We're ending the podcast in three, three two, two one. one. Bye. So try to be free.